All right. Welcome to um, CAD. Sorry, I, I had a big pile of um, handouts. What have I done with them? Oh, here we go. All right, if you haven't got one of these already, put your hand up. Cool, you too. All right. Okay, so... Um, CAD Studio. What are we going to be doing this year? First up, we've got um, we've got a few things just to go through. I'm going to talk about the setup of these computers, your logins, and all that sort of carry on. I've got a bunch of notes that I have to keep too, because otherwise I'll lose track and start wandering off topic. Um, first thing is, did you get an email from me about the tutorials? If you didn't, or if one of your friends who isn't here didn't get one, that means that either they are not enrolled. Um, or their email address is wrong in the system. Um, if you do change your email address that you're using, um, or if it's different to the one that you used at enrolment, like if you used your mum's for some reason, <laughs> I don't know, um, just make sure you go down to Student Central and change it there, because then it will change everywhere, including Moodle, in theory. Okay? Um, what I'll do, if there's any announcements, um, including, like, for example, if I was really crook and I couldn't come into class, I'll just send a message through um, Moodle, which gets emailed out to you all. So try not to ignore those. <laughs> I know it's tempting. But um, that's our, our, my main way of communicating with you guys. Okay? And vice versa as well. You can either um, post um, a reply on the blog, especially if it, on the, sorry, on the Moodle, if it's, um, especially if it's related to the, the topic and everybody would like to see the answer, you know, we don't know how to create a new document in ARCHICAD, then if I reply to it there, everybody gets to see it rather than me having to reply to everybody's individual requests. So that's quite good. Um, I'm going to go through Moodle and, and other ways that we're going to support um, this paper. Um, computer problems will occur from time to time. I beg you to log a job, which is, um, see the phone down the end there, if you dial 8484, um, they'll put you in contact with um, somebody in IT, and just tell them what the problem is. If you guys log a job, it gets a really high priority listing, and um, they'll sort it out. If you just go, nah, that machine doesn't work, and move to the next one, that computer does not get fixed, and it will not get fixed until someone eventually logs a job. And I don't generally use the computers in this room myself, so I might not find the problem might, um, either. Um, telling a lecturer or Sandra or something like that isn't going to get the job fixed either. 8484 is by far. The more you guys make noise, the you know, more attention we get and the better our computers will run, etc., etc. Cool? 8484. Um, that's also, like, if you, if you have problems with your logging in and anything like that, anything um, computer related, they're probably not going to be able to tell you how to create a new document in ARCHICAD, but um, you can try it. <laughs> All right. Um, if you haven't caught my name already, I'm Zane. Um, my details are on um, the, the handout that I've given you. Matthew Burson, who isn't here yet, which could just be a communication problem. That's all right. Um, it's day one. He will um, normally be sitting in this um, lecture slot and helping you out. So while I'm talking, um, he'll jump up and give you a hand if you get a little bit stuck. Um, be prepared that in this session you might have two per computer. Although, what's a, I don't know, who's got the class roster? How many people on it? It should say at the top. 22? I think that's just enough for one computer each, possibly. <laughs> but um, don't worry, um, if you, there is two people during this session, it's not a big deal. In fact, it's actually quite good, because if one of you don't get it, the other one might. So you don't tend to fall behind. Um, it means that one person won't sit there also you know, on Facebook, which is great, <laughs> because the other one will punch them in the shoulder. Um, but yeah, don't worry about it. We won't be doing any... Um, necessarily any coursework in this slot. Um, that's reserved for the tutorial session, so that's when you'd be working on your own um, assignments and you'd have one-on-one -on -one contact with me as well, and so I'll help you with whatever it is that we're stuck on. But in these sessions, generally speaking, 
um, we will be working on, oh sorry, we're learning new, new things, okay, mostly to do with the software. In the first couple of tutorial sessions, we will also be learning a little bit with the software as well, mainly because you, I can't expect you to start working on the assignment if you don't know how to use the software. Okay, so the first couple of sessions, we will probably have some learning content, if you like, um, but generally, the rest of the year, that will be the time that you work on your assignments. Um, you will have to work on assignments outside of class as well, of course. Um, there's always that, that requirement. Um, however, as long as you just keep ticking away, at the, you, you should find the workloads fine. A lot of the assignments, especially um, the second and third one, if you try and leave it to the last minute, you're going to be pulling your hair out. So it's just something you've got to be you know, chipping away at. Um, okay, on the <coughs> digital support side, we have um, a server on, we, we generally use the Mac side in here, now that doesn't mean that you can't use the PC side, but I would highly recommend the Mac side, we have a very unlocked if you like, there's no restrictions, you can save to the desktop. Um, it does help if you get to the same computer again, just for your own peace of mind. So if you're sitting in front of a computer now, which you all are, um, try and stay on that machine. Um, it doesn't mean you can't, but it means that if you save something to the desktop on that computer, when you come and sit down there, it will be there again. All of your settings will, will, will remain. If you go and set up Archicad in a particular way that you like it, it will stay like that for you. Um, likewise with the dock and any shortcuts and that sort of carry-on. Um, if you're using InDesign or Word or Photoshop and you rearrange the palettes, they will stay like that on that computer for you only. Okay, if somebody else comes along and logs in, they're not going to see it configured that way. Um, but it will remember all those settings, which is quite nice. On the PC side, I don't know if you already know this, but it doesn't work like that. It will reset everything, including any file that you save to the desktop will be gone. Okay. Yeah, kind of a little bit evil, because a lot of people work off the desktop, myself included. So you yeah, be very careful. If you save stuff to the PC and you reboot it, it'll wipe everything off the desktop. Cool. But you'll have a nice clean desktop. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, and you can save things directly to these computers, um, to your home directory. However, it does come with a warning, computers break down, files get lost, always have at least two copies um, of your file. So if I was you, I'd just work off the computer as normal. When you finish for the, se for, for the, for the day or whenever, um, drag a copy of it onto a memory stick or onto backup, which is this fella here. So it says backup. Okay, that backup, I don't, can't remember how much space you've got on there, I think it, 5 gig? Yeah, so it's enough to keep backups of your current project. Okay, when you finish you could burn it to DVD if you wanted to. Burning to DVD seems like a little bit archaic, but it's a great archive medium because it's burnt, it's solid and you can stick it on the shelf, it's not going to you know, get wet or corrupted or anything like that. Maybe after about 20 odd years, but I don't know how they'll be designing computer CAD programs then are probably incompatible anyway. All right. Um, all right. The other one that we've got here is Momus. Okay, now Momus, if you go uh, Momus Landscape, um, we'll have all of the courses that, well, at least all the ones that um, have files stored on the server. We'll have all the courses on here, including. LAN 6230, I'm going to make red, and you should also be able to see that now. Now inside here I usually will store all sorts of different things, um, including just a bunch of Archicad stuff, I don't know what I've put in there actually now, I haven't updated that for a while, but I think it's usually like tutorials and things like that. So if you're struggling a little bit, you can jump in there. Um, assignment 1 files. So that's the files that we'll be using for assignment one. Um, there's also handouts and assignments, and so that includes um, the intro thing, which I've just given you. So if you've left this at home and you really wanted to have a look at something, um, you can just check it out on there. Um, and also assignment one, which I haven't actually handed out yet. 
Uh, some random photos of the sports fields. There's also a thing here called share. That share folder you can write to. Okay, you shouldn't, in theory, be able to um, write or delete or anything any other um, file in there, but the share you can. So you can jump in there. If there's something that you guys are working on a project um, and you've got some files from the council, you can pop them into there and then all your mates can grab hold of them as well. So it's just a way of being able to share files amongst you. Um, you'll find that most of the papers will have that as well. So if you go into the studio one, there should be a share folder in there as well. So you can share it specific to the paper that you're working on. Um, also, though, keep in mind that, especially with CAD, sharing CAD files, like, oh, I've already done the assignment one here, I'll share it for my mates to use, that's called plagiarism. And um, it's taken quite seriously, and you'll either get a zero for the entire paper, or at least for the assignment, including whoever did the work originally. Okay? It's like, because we're not going to get into an argument on who did the work and who didn't. It just, I guess... It's quite serious. So do not copy each other's work. Okay? In studio, it might be a little bit different because it's about the design and what you're working with. Okay? If you shared a, a model of um, the sports building, it's not a big deal. And here it is, though, because you're trying to prove what your CAD skills are. Okay? So trying to offer somebody else's work as your own is not cool. Okay. We've had only, it's happened a couple of times, and I don't like it. It causes me a lot of paperwork. I don't like paperwork. All right. What else have we got in there? Um, this uh, all about. We had a huge collection of websites, and the server did something evil to them all and killed them all. And so now all we have is AlgaeMap and Tokyo Plastic. So I don't even know if that works still. All right. We also have Moodle which you should have all used last year. Dun, dun, dun. Yep, go away. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, land 6230. It should look something like that. Oh, my, my flashy logo doesn't quite fit in there. There we go. Okay. Uh, general announcements. So you'll probably see... Now, normally that actually is called news. Um, you'll find with other Moodle papers. The problem with the news one is you guys aren't allowed to reply to the news things. For some, I don't know, not re no reason. So I've actually um, hidden the news one and I've renamed it or created a new one called general announcements. Um, so you can reply to those as well. So if, there's, if I make an announcement and you want to reply to it, by all means do. So you'll see the email that I sent out the other day. Cool. Uh, there's a, there is like a social forum in there. Um, so you can just post whatever you like in there actually. You'll probably find things like going to the pub or something. I think it gets recycled every now and then. Archicad forum. Um, there's a website database that we need to add to. So I've created that. So if you find any um, websites, you can post them in there and it will have a whole bunch of websites for Archicad or whatever. And the tutorial choice. So if you haven't done this already, try and um, do it before Thursday. Now, I don't know, if you, when you're enrolled, you can probably en only enroll in one of the tutorial sessions. And um, which is kind of a bit awkward, that system, because it's like, well, what happens if circumstances change, then it gets really awkward. So we've got this brilliant system. I think it's limited. I can't remember to how many, 12 or so per class, per session, something like that. But what you can do is you can just choose whatever session you want. If you want to swap, by all means do, but just do it via here. That way I won't have too many in one session. So if you wanted to swap and there was too many in the other class, you could go and talk to somebody and say, hey, do you want to swap with me? And then you just both jump in there. Hopefully you do it at the same time and somebody else doesn't snake it. But, um, so yeah, so you can change whenever you like, just as long as you do it through here, okay? 
Because otherwise what happens is I end up with, you know, oh, the traffic was a bit bad, so everybody turns up in the second session, and then I haven't got enough time to deal with each of you individually. So if anything, you want to be in the smaller class. Um, Wednesday morning has only got one person in it, so they're going to be getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with me to work on their assignments. I'm um, sorry, you just arrived. So anybody else hasn't got this? All right. Um, now, I'll also put things like the assignment on there as well. The cool thing with the Moodle, of course, is it's available off campus as well. So, um, sorry, I haven't done it yet. I've just realised. Usually these assignments will be on there as well. Okay, so then if you're at home and you go, oh, I haven't got the assignment, you can jump on there and download it and look at it either as a PDF or print it out. Okay, any questions so far? No? Brilliant. Um, I'll, actually, I'll introduce over in here in the corner is Kieran Dove, and he's nearly always in this room. <laughs> he's um, a master's student, and um, he's also willing to answer your questions between the hours of 9 and 5, and outside of that he says he'll charge you either a drink or something to eat. <laughs> So he's not, uh, he's not officially employed here, but he is, um, he's quite helpful. All right. Let's have a look at... We looked at everything, I think, support-wise. Let me check my notes. Or, okay, so we talked about 8484. Introduce class, handouts, yeah, printing. Oh, printing. Um, okay, so in this room, when you go file print, you should see that there's a printer with the name of the, um, the name of this room. When you go and print, there's a release station down the end, which I've just stolen the mouse off. Um, so you've got to go log into there, release the job, and it'll pop out of there. There's also colour printing on, I think, the Xerox next to Trina's office. I think that's colour. Um, otherwise, you can take a file on a USB stick through to the copy centre. They've got like a little satellite office now, just over here um, in the foyer. And um, they'll do um, up to A1, possibly AO, I'm not sure. But um, they've got lots of colour printing facilities there as well. So if you want to print stuff out, either in black and white or colour. Black and white, this will do up to A3. Um, otherwise, I would recommend you go to the copy centre and um, print out there. Um, we've also got a plotter here as well, and especially if you want to print to different paper stocks and things like that. I'm not sure if the Copy Centre does large format printing on different stocks. You can always ask them. I saw her this morning and she said that she was very bored and she was waiting for students to come and ask her questions. So <laughs> I said, you're going to regret that. <laughs> so yeah, by all means, go and talk to them. Um, but I do know that we have got different paper stocks, but you do have to allow some time. Okay, because if it's really busy, um, Brett, who runs the, the plotters and the laser printers and stuff, uh, the laser cutter and stuff over there, um, is not going to be keen to be changing roles while, you know, 50 architecture students are waiting to print out their latest assignment. So just make sure you've got a couple of days um, up your sleeve. In fact, anything like that with computers, don't leave it to the last minute because computers have this amazing tendency to not do what they're meant to. Um, at the last possible minute, <laughs> including like printing and saving files and who knows what. Right. Oops. That just started recording me. Excellent. Okay. Logging in. Oh, everybody, everybody's uh, managed to log in, all right? Cool. I think there might be a limit on how many times you can log into different systems. So if you tried logging into more than, I think, four or five places, you might find it won't let you log in anymore. So if you are having problems logging in, just make sure you haven't left yourself logged in somewhere else. And I know that it depends on what services you're using. Like if you're using the internet, I think that might actually use up an extra login or something crazy. So if you're finding that you can't log in and you could, just make sure you've logged out of another computer, in an, especially in another room or something like that. In fact, always make sure you log out um, because otherwise someone can jump on your computer and start messing with your stuff. 
And they quite often do because they go, oh, cool, here's a machine. Someone hasn't logged out, I'll just use this one. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. <coughs> Printing the backing up files, I talked about that. So you always make sure you've got at least one copy somewhere else. Um, also, yeah, memory sticks and especially portable hard drives um, do fail. Okay? So I get at least one a month of student coming to me saying, my memory stick doesn't work, can you help me? So um, just keep that in mind. So don't keep all of your files on one memory stick in your handbag. Handbags get stolen. Um, things get wet. They just stop working for who knows what reason. So just remember that that is not the best solution. Okay? It's great for moving files from point A to point B, but make sure you've got a copy somewhere. If it's on, a, on the backup here or on another memory stick or on your computer at home, somewhere. So make sure you've got another copy of it. Um, portable hard drives as well um, are delicate machines. So I would highly recommend that when you go and plug them in and unplug them and that sort of carry on, that you put them down on a solid surface, then plug it in. Likewise, when you go to unplug it, you unplug it, let it wind down and then move it. Don't kind of grab it, lift it up and start unplugging it because the disc will still be spinning. And um, it's kind of like a gyroscope. You go and move the, the drive and the thing's going to start hitting internal components. So they are designed as ruggedly as they can, but you've got to remember that they are a delicate bit of equipment in there. So um, I would highly re recommend using memory sticks over portable hard drives. Use them for um, backing stuff up, but if you've got them in your bag, and you know, you're skateboarding around or doing whatever you do, um, don't be too surprised if it stops working all of a sudden. Cool? Okay. Um, let's have a little look. Now, I try to get as many different types of programs on these computers as possible. That doesn't mean that I teach them all or that I'm an expert in all of them. But I try to get you guys as much exposure as I possibly can. So um, we'll have a little quick look here. So if we go to the applications folder, you'll see there's all sorts of things on here, including pretty much every single Adobe app available. Um, everything from After Effects to Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator and all that sort of stuff. We might do a little bit on InDesign. It used to be part of the paper, but um, to reduce content, it's been, that assignment's been pulled, but I might try and get you some exposure to it anyway. You should have done a little bit of InDesign last year in Viscom. <coughs> so I'll probably just give you a little bit more of um, a workflow and, and good use practices um, in InDesign. Um, what else we got? Oh, there's some... Um, there's um, things like all Maya and all that sort of carry on if you want to get into really hardcore 3D animation. Um, Blender, which is an open source 3D content creator. What else have we got in there? Um, SketchUp, Graphisoft, and then there's Archicad, which is actually should be a shortcut to it. No, there's not. You bastards. Anyway. Oh, I see that's serious. The green one is Archicad, but that, that's where it lives. So that's what we'll be using mostly in this paper. Um, anything else of interest? Oh, Vectorworks is there as well, if you like Vectorworks. And um, View, which we won't officially teach in this class, but I will definitely show you. Some of you might want to have a, have a good play in it. Um, there's supposed to be a View paper hopefully, in second semester. So um, we've just got um, accreditation to be an official VIEW education centre or something like that. And so now it's just a matter of getting... Um, it's actually going to be sort of a standalone paper, just specifically on VIEW, not necessarily as part of the degree, but just as a general, uh, generic um, paper. However, FilmCAD, you will use VIEW and you will learn it from scratch. So if you do fit the FilmCAD paper, we'll be using View a lot. Um, it's basically um, a 3D... You can model in it, but it's not really intended for modelling other than landscape modelling. 
Um, but it's very, very, very good at trees and grass and leaves and you name it. Huge polygon counts. You, know, you can design islands covered in palm trees with coconuts on them and that sort of carry on. Okay, so it's fantastic for that. So what we can do is we can use ARCHICAD to do all of our hard landscaping and that sort of carry on. And then we can export that model into view and then start turning the you know, green polygons into grass and that sort of carry on. So it's really cool for that sort of thing. Um, you can, of course, animate in it, which what we'll, is what we'll be doing in FilmCAD. However, you could also just use it for creating still images. And you'll see a lot of that on the walls around here as well. All right. Let's drop into ARCHICAD. So you can either go Applications, Graphisoft, ARCHICAD, or just hit the great big green logo in your taskbar. Oh, if I talk too quickly, just tell me, because <laughs> I know I have a tendency to do it. Um, these lectures are recorded, so um, everything that you see on the screen and hear from my voice is recorded. Um, so you can actually go back and watch it again. They are rather long and boring, because <laughs> you might have a tendency to fast forward through a lot of it, that's cool. Um, where dangers occur is when people go, I'm not going to class today, I'll just watch the video. Because then you get, okay, that's three hours of video you have to watch, and then it happens again, and then people fall behind. You haven't got the ability to ask me questions. Um, and so the only time that I find that that system fails is when people start to rely on it. Also, occasionally, um, the recordings fail for whatever reason. The software crashes or the audio drops out and... That has happened in the past, so the last thing you want to do is find out that, oh, I've not even missed the lecture, but I haven't got the recording now either. Um, this year will be slightly different to last year, but I have got all the previous year's recordings as well. So if you want to watch you know, 2010's version of this lecture, by all, by all means do. I don't know if it's better or worse. You can be the judge of that, I suppose. Okay, so I've started up ARCHICAD, and the first thing I'm presented with is start ARCHICAD 16, you want to create a new project or open a project, so we're going to create a new project, and then there's templates, although there's only one template, we haven't created any. Um, but if you're in a drawing office, there might be lots of templates there that they've created. Um, you can also use the latest project settings, so if you did a project um, and you've created all sorts of layers and pen types and materials and stuff, if you use that, it will have all the same settings. But nearly always we're going to go create a new project, blah, 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 excellent, new. Now, we've got the latest version of ARCHICAD, and for some reason they've decided that you guys would like to look at yellow as a background colour. Although you can barely see my grid on the projector. Um, we can change that. I don't know, they've probably done some sort of scientific study or something. Maybe it keeps you calm. I suppose it would be pink, really, wouldn't it? Maybe a light pink so you don't get angry and smash your computer. <laughs> I, know, I don't understand why they've done that. Mind you, um, AutoCAD, I think it still does it as well, has a black background, which is ridiculous, because how many times do you print out on black paper? So it was always, I never understood that. But I understand it more than pale yellow. <laughs> All right. No, no, thank you. Go away. Leave me alone. All right. Actually, you can close this MET routing palette if it pops up. We'll get there one day, but I'm not that interested in it right now. Okay. So this is ARCHICAD. Now, ARCHICAD is what's called a BIM. You have to also realise that, yes, you do kind of live a little bit in the architect's world. Um, some of the software packages will have plugins for doing landscaping stuff, especially Vectorworks has a lot of cool um, plugins for it. Um, but don't get put off by it, okay? So you might find a bit of the terminology is very architecture based. You know, we're, we're dealing with walls and slabs. You know, it's like, well, a wall can be, you know, a fence or whatever you like it to be. It's just a way of describing that object. So don't get too, too fussed about it. Um, we can do everything we need to and, and more. Um, and in fact, a lot of the architectural elements that are in the program are great for us because you will have to build things like facades of buildings 
Okay, if you're doing a landscape, you can't just completely ignore the surroundings. And so um, you will be learning how to use things like the windows and door tools and all that sort of carry on as well. So you can also draw up your dream home if you want to. I always find it quite fascinating that um, a lot of the students in here get very carried away with the architecture and not the landscape. <laughs> Which, yeah, always puzzled me, but anyway. Okay, Archicad's what's called a BIM which is a building information model. Um, this is a hot topic at the moment, and um, going all the way through to GIS, they've, they've expanded on this, on this concept as well. And the idea is that you're not just drawing lines and squares and circles on a bit of paper, you're creating a virtual model of, okay, a building, but in your guys' case, a landscape's no different. Okay, so things like the materials that um, an object is made up of. So if you make a a concrete wall um, out of concrete blocks, it knows it's made out of concrete blocks, it knows how, so how big those blocks are, how much they cost, and it can create a bill of materials for you. Okay, so there's information attached to everything. And so Archicad and Revit um, are very orientated to this, this, uh, this concept of BIM. Um, so you're not, everything's you know, got information attached to it. So now, yes, there is lots of programs out there that get used in the industry, and I nearly always get um, people from the industry going, why aren't you teaching MicroStation? That's what we use, and it's the best program. And then I get the Vectorworks people ringing me up and saying the same thing, and then other people saying, why can't you guys use Revit? And there is no standard for landscapers. Um, you'll probably just end up using whatever the architects in the office use. Um, sometimes that's quite awkward. I know that uh, Revit isn't that great for landscapers. That's coming from um, landscape architects that work in the office that uses Revit, and they usually end up using some other program. But what you should know is that um, a lot of the, the files and everything that you're creating and um, using are in some way or another transferable from one program to the other. Okay? It's not always going to be as seamless as like a Word document, but because um, all the, the tools work kind of different, but you can always do what you have to do in whatever program. Now, you're also going to find that if you do go into Office and they're using um, AutoCAD, you, if you already know an, a, a CAD program, it's not going to be difficult to jump ship. Okay? You already know how, what lines are and walls and slabs and all the cross sections and all that sort of carry on. You just have to learn how it's different. So it's not like learning one from scratch. Okay? This, if this is your first CAD program you've learnt, Yes, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get your head around the terminology and, and how it all works, but once you've learnt one, especially if you've learnt one program thoroughly, jumping ship isn't that difficult. In fact, it's a great thing to do because you'll get a CV with two programs on it, you know, maybe three or whatever. So you'll find that out there people are using Archicad, um, Vectorworks, SketchUp, which is not a CAD program but some people out there swear by it and think it's the best thing on the, on the planet. But it is not a CAD program, and um, I'm sure once you finish this paper, if you'd opened up SketchUp, you would agree. Um, AutoCAD is used out there. MicroStation, um, which about 10 years ago was light years ahead of everything. Uh, it works really good with the GIS, but it's very rare to see it actually being used outside of one very large landscape company in Auckland. So, yeah, there's lots of things out there. Um, now, we have considered the idea of teaching lots of different programs. The problem is, though, is that you'd learn um, nothing, really, because you just learn a little bit of each program, and you wouldn't be competent in any of them. So I think it's much more important to learn one well. Also, Archicad's kind of nicely positioned between them all. If you get to use Archicad, you won't find Vectorworks too different. You would find that the basic concepts that are used in Archicad are used in Revit and AutoCAD and all that sort of carry on. So it's kind of nicely centred in amongst them all. Um, and it's really, really, really good at documentation and creating all your sections and updating things. And the workflow is just fantastic. Um, you, know, you can make a change to one little thing and it'll update all of your documentations and your sections and elevations and renders and all that sort of stuff and then you charge the client for an extra week's work when it only took you five minutes. <laughs> cool? 
Okay. All right, so this, what we're looking at is the 2D view. And down the left-hand side, you'll see a bunch of tools, which seems to have actually fallen off the side of my projector. It's kind of a little bit frustrating, but I suppose I can move them back into frame. Okay, so um, those are our tools. Everything across the top bar, or actually the second row in that top bar, are related to whatever tool you've got selected. Okay, so you can see at the moment the wall tool is selected, and then up there we've got a whole bunch of things um, related to the wall tool. We're going to go through all this. Um, on the right-hand side is our navigator. What this does is it kind of stores all the drawings and 3D views and things like that. So if we create um, a cross-section, you'd see it appear in that. Obviously, this big space in the middle is where we draw. <coughs> now, for some reason on the template, it creates um, some elevations. They're just assuming that for some reason whatever you're drawing is going to fit perfectly inside this box. Um, so I usually delete those immediately. In fact, we're going to do that. So there's a little arrow tool up there. I'm just going to draw a box around everything. Now, you can try this with me. Things in CAD programs work slightly different to most programs and that everything is single clicks. Okay, so instead of going click and holding the mouse down and dragging over something, you'll notice that you go one click. Okay, I can take my hand off the mouse and two clicks. Okay, and I've selected everything. And you'll find that this is in most of the things, like if you had draw a wall, you define the beginning of the wall, then you click and you define the, the end of the wall. And the reason they do that is that otherwise you're straining a muscle. It might not seem like you know, a big deal, um, but you're straining a muscle for a long period of time every time you're like clicking and holding something, and you will get what's called RSI, or Occupational Overuse Syndrome, OOS. Okay, and that's quite a reality. I have in an office one time um, in Holland and there was about six developers and three of them got RSI in some form or another. Okay, and it's um, usually like a muscle strain and you just get constant aching pain from usually things in your carpal tunnel syndrome through here or through a hand or wrist or you just get a nervous twitch that just keeps clicking everywhere. And I've yeah, which is really quite frustrating because I've had that one <laughs> where you just go to use the computer and your finger just keeps clicking every now and then. <laughs> so, yeah, not cool. So, um, CAD software is designed to try and reduce that, that strain, but you should also be a little bit more active about it as well. In fact, there's some lovely exercises up there that somebody's pinched the pins out of, um, of people doing stretching exercises. But you should try and at least yeah, have a bit of a stretch every half hour or so. I think they recommend every 15 minutes, but I know that's difficult to do because 15 minutes on a computer disappears um, very quickly. Um, you should also look around the room and refocus. So you're not always just staring at the screen that's exactly the same distance away from your face all the time. Um, and try and get outside and just have a bit of a stretch, and have a bit of a break. So don't try and do like you know six hours solid in front of the computer without moving. Um, ideally, your chairs should be able to go up and down and your desk should be able to go up and down and all that sort of care. And we've done as good a job as we can. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. All right. So what can we do in here? So I'm going to clip, clip, and get rid of that. All right. I'm just going to start off with the wall tool, okay? Um, if you're not in front of a computer, just go... Yeah. Oh, there's a couple more up here. You guys want to come up? And you guys got a computer? No? <laughs> What's going on here? Fear though, I, um, I sent an email to a couple of people to organise it. I don't know what happened. It's all right.
There's one there, one there. All right. So, I've got the wall tool here. And if you just click somewhere on your screen, you'll start defining a line. And click again, and you'll complete the line. All right. Pretty simple. Is it working, or is it? Oh, did it? Oh, bugger. It's meant to be running Mac. Just keep an eye on what I'm doing. We're not going to be doing anything major. It's not going to put you back or anything. All right. So that was a straight wall. If we have a look at the top here, though, we've actually got different ways of drawing this wall. So if you click and hold on this, you'll actually see now anything that has a little triangle next to it, see that's got like a little wall, it's got like a little triangle. If you click and hold on one of those buttons, um, you'll see other options. So you click and hold and you can see we can do what's called a poly wall or a wall with many points. And you just keep clicking every time you click, you create another, another thing. Cool. You either double click or you click on the first point and it will complete it. Pete. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Got everything you need, everything working. I think so. Yep, everything going well for you? Not bad. Oh. Daniel's been fucking emails and texts me. I haven't replied to any of them, so I don't know where he's at. <laughs> but. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Who are you helping? Oh, so you're hunting, head hunting. No. Help yourself to whoever you want. All right, so that's that's a poly wall. There's a square wall. So the square wall, you just simply define by clicking on the top left corner or clicking in one of the corners and then clicking in the opposite corner and you'll draw a square wall. Here's a square on an angle. Now, in case you're not entirely sure how a tool works or you can't remember, there's actually a little bar at the bottom of the screen and it says enter first corner of rotated rectangle wall. It's um, very weird, geeky computer speak sometimes. So, I've done that. I should be telling the rest. Enter rotation vector of rectangle wall. It's actually wrong. That's why I've already done that, but anyway. So. All right. Now, once you've drawn a whole bunch of stuff, a neat trick is you press F, ah, poo. You hold down the function key and go F3. I'm going to show you how to change this. It's meant to be changed in the build, but... Okay, so if you hold down the function key, which is... Underneath F, what is it? F13. Underneath F13 on your keyboard, it says Fn. You go F3, it will show you the 3D view. If you go F2, it will take you back to the 2D view. Now, right, some. Oh, you've got to hold that down, because uh, otherwise you go F3, you're going to do that, which isn't very cool. So I do that. Yeah, but I'm going to show you a way to change it, which I normally have changed, but... Okay. I'm going to show you something, because otherwise, every time you go, and we use that F2, F3 a lot, and F4, which I haven't talked about yet, but... Um, there are function keys that we use a lot, and it's going to be a real pain in the bum if you have to keep holding down that function key, especially when you get into like other keyboard shortcuts. So, if you go to the Apple and then go System Preferences, you should be presented with something like that. Then go Keyboard, 
So it says here, use all F1, F2, etc. keys as standard function keys. Yes, please. Okay, I'll do that again. So you click on the Apple, System Prefs, Keyboard, and it says there, use all F1 keys. Click that. That means you don't have to hold the function key down to go F2, F3. However, if you wanted to now adjust the screen brightness, you would have to hold down that function key. Okay? Um, now, that will stick, that setting will stay the same for whatever login you've logged in on, on that particular computer. But if you go to a different computer, um, you're going to have to do that again. Sorry about that. I usually have that all set up in the build, but it somehow got slipped. All good? I could probably, actually I might ask IT to push it out, because they can, they can push out a setting like that out to all the computers, because otherwise it's so annoying. Alright. See, now I can just go F2, F3 with one hand. Cool. <laughs> I don't know if that will crash it. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Okay, we'll have a little bit of fun in the 3D view. In fact, no, we won't. Okay, has everybody got something on their screens now? Yeah, yeah all looking cool? Yeah. Excellent. What we're going to do is, I'm just going to talk about navigation in here. Um, so, zooming in, zooming out, and all that sort of carry on. Now, at the bottom of this window, see this big yellow window down here, it says 1 to 50, 50% 50 and a whole bunch of other stuff. So this is, this is what I'm going to be looking at now. Alright. Scale. Scale is a funny thing on a computer because it doesn't really matter. You're drawing one to one. Okay, the only time that scale becomes an issue is when you go to put your drawing onto a piece of paper. Okay, in the physical world and you can actually measure it. So just remember that scale in here is, is kind of meaningless. Oh, press F2. Okay, so now what you will notice though is that if I had some text on the screen, so here's a text tool down here. It says hello. Now that text is two and a half millimetres high. And I can barely see it. In fact, I can't really see it. Okay, if I zoom in, it says hello. If you change the scale, if I change this to 1 to 1,000, now it looks like the word hello got bigger, but it didn't. The word hello stayed exactly the same size. My entire drawing just got smaller because I changed the scale. Okay, so... On screen, what will look different at different scales is the size of text, the thickness of, um, of pens and fills and things like that. Um, I don't think it's actually showing me true line weight at the moment, but if I turn that on, I know I haven't covered this yet, but see, that's actually simulating how thick the lines would be if I printed this out one to a thousand. It's also saying that I've zoomed into this document 1,319%. So that's where the scale comes into it, okay? So it's just, really, it's only going to affect what comes out in the printer. But if you find your text is too small or too large, chances are your text is, uh, sorry, your scale's wrong. Okay, so don't go, ah, oh, this word is way too small, I'm going to change this to be 50 millimetres high, because that's how high it will be printed. So when you go to print it, all of a sudden your text is going to be 50 millimetres high and your drawing is going to be tiny. Cool? Alright, I'm going to turn that true line weight off and I'll change this back to 1 to 50, just so I'm back to where most of you should be. Okay. Now you probably, I don't know if you've been onto it, there's one very, very handy button that I use all the time. And I'm going to kind of skip through a whole bunch of these. I don't know, can I zoom in on this? No. Um, see this little, there's a little button right down the bottom left here? It looks like a magnifying glass with 
I don't know, bits of wire stuck in it. That there fits everything to view. And it is probably one of your best mates. Okay, so if you go and zoom all the way out, yeah, or zoom all the way in or whatever, and you want to see the entire drawing again, you just click that, boom, and it will fit everything to view. I'll show you a warning, because this happens occasionally. Let's say, for some reason, right, you're looking at your view, and you go, right, fit to view, and it does that. That's because there's something way up here somewhere that's in your drawing. And it's very simple, it's very, very easy to do, especially in the 3D view, you go to drop a column, and you think you're dropping it on top of something, in fact you're dropping it about five kilometres off in the distance. Okay? So if you go to, go to fit to view and your drawing goes way down there, that usually means there's something up there. The easiest way is you just go and select everything and aha, there's a tiny little column up there. You delete it, fit to view, and everything works again. Cool? You will make mistakes, it's a given. The real trick is being able to find your mistakes and fix them. Okay? So, if it doesn't work, there's usually something out there. You can also go Command A. There's one. Command A is select all. In fact, look at your keyboard. Now, I don't know if you already know this. Command A is select all. That works for pretty much any program. Okay, everything from Photoshop to um, the Finder to you know, Word, whatever. Command A will select all. Command Z will be undo, X is cut, C is copy, V is paste. Okay? In fact, I've given you these shortcuts on this page here. Okay, so there's some that are, are pretty universal. So it's on the second page of that handout I gave you. Command N is a new file or a new window. Okay, again, that will work in Photoshop and all sorts of programs. If you get really good at your keyboard shortcuts, you will be lightning fast and you'll impress all your friends okay, and earn lots of money and be very successful in life. <laughs> Command Q, quit application. W is close window. Tilde will switch windows. So if you've got lots of windows, you can go Command Tilde and flip through all the windows that you currently have open. Um, I'm, this is, these are pretty generic. That doesn't mean it works for every program, but in theory it should. Um, italic, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then on the on the back side of this as well, I've given you um, a bunch of ARCHICAD keyboard shortcuts, which I believe are still correct. All right. Oh, that, yeah, so I don't know if you've already picked up on it, but that um, kind of box with the frilly corners is the command key. Um, the other one that looks like a funny symbol like this, That's the Alt key or the Option key. Um, has it got? And Control is usually just CTRL or something. Well, there doesn't seem to be any with that anyway. With the, uh, with the PC, just swap the Command key with the Control key. So it's Control C, Control V, Control whatever. Okay. Although they have some strange ones for closing a window. I think it's Alt F4. All right. So yeah, keyboard shortcuts are also very good for preventing oosh. Okay, the more keyboard shortcuts you use, the less mouse clicking you're doing. Um, some programs you might even find you can use them without even using the, the mouse at all. So, um, uh, outside of that, you can use um, a Wacom tablet in here if you've got one. Um, I believe the drivers are installed, so if you get one of those like Wacom bamboos. Um, a Wacom tablet is like a pen. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's, um, it's like a pen and a tablet, and you can draw directly onto the screen. Really cool for things like Photoshop and that sort of thing. So you've got it's pressure sensitive, even angle sensitive. Um, and I use one mostly just to use a different type of input. So again, about that. Oh, so if you're using different types of um, of input, then you don't tend to strain the, mu the muscles in the same way. Um, however, some people do not like the pens at all. They are a bit clumsy at doing things like 
getting around the file system. A little too organic almost. But um, if you are concerned about RSI, um, a pen tablet is a great alternative and it's really cool for Photoshop type work. Really, really good because yeah, you can kind of just get into little areas and be a lot more organic with it rather than a mouse which is either on or off. A pen tablet usually has about at least 512 levels of pressure so you can really get some natural stuff going on. A couple hundred dollars, two or three hundred dollars I think. Yeah. But I mean I got one about ten years ago, I'm still using the exact same thing. So they don't tend to go out of date. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the drivers are installed. I think, well, they're installed for the bamboo, which I think is their, their cheaper option. I don't know if it will work for the, the flasher ones. You can go all the way right up to a, a thing like a 24 inch screen that you can draw directly onto. I had the pleasure of having one for a month on trial and it was awesome. Except for I kept going to my other screen and trying to draw on that. <laughs> all right. So, hang on, let's get rid of my text. So we can zoom in, zoom out. This is okay, so we've talked about scale. Um, that zoom factor as well, again, it's kind of assuming that your screen is, um, if it's at 100%, in theory, something on your screen should be the same size as what it would be printed. Okay, more or less. All right, actually, I don't know what that triangle does. Oh, there you go, it's just a bunch of saved zooms. Um, now, obviously, you can zoom in and out with the, um, the scroll wheel on your mouse. If you hold down the middle mouse button, which is actually that little dot, um, usually the scroll wheel, um, if you click on that, you can move the screen around like that. Cool? Just to note, I think um, Apple's are set up by default to not use the... the middle mouse button, so if you're on your own computer you might just have to go into the settings and, and turn it on. Um, yeah, with these white mice, if you touch the left side when you're clicking, it's a left click. If you're touching the right side, it's a right click. If you're touching the middle, it's a middle click. Okay, so it's actually sensitive to where your finger is on the surface. Um, for most, 90% of people it's not a problem. For some people, though, they rest their whole hand on the mouse at all times, and then it doesn't really work. So you'll find you can never do a right click. So you've actually got to take one finger off. All right. Is there anything else? No, not really. Um, yeah, so a three-button mouse is pretty vital with CAD software. Okay, um, if you don't like using the zoom wheel or it's broken, this guy here, it's got like a magnifying glass with a plus and minus next to it. If you click somewhere, you can just um, move your mouse up and down and it zooms in and out. Okay, as soon as you click, it disengages. Um, then there's the plus, which will just zoom into an area. Minus which will zoom out in a weird kind of way. I usually just double click on it and it will zoom out. Okay, likewise, if you double click the plus, it will just zoom in by a set factor. I have no idea where that's set, but that's what it does. Okay, there's the hand tool, which is exactly the same as that middle mouse button. Just to um, show you how that works, the best way to think of it is if I want this corner here down the bottom right, okay, so I'd go click on my hand tool, click the bottom right there and click the bottom right there, okay? So it's all about, I want to move this from here to here. So if you think of it like that, it's quite, quite simple. Cool. Um, the next one I've already talked about, which is that fit in window. Um, this one here will actually rotate your screen. Okay, so that can be very, very handy. Um, if, for, you know, for example, your site might be north up, but really the site faces the road, and it's kind of annoying having to work 
on everything on a funny angle. Yeah, so you can just rotate the entire screen. You can also rotate the grid as well, but we'll talk about that later. And how do I reset it? There we go. You click on that and it'll go back to what it was. If it should do. Okay, if it didn't, I can always go, let's say I had it at some crazy angle. Yeah. Leave me alone. Um, I could always go, right, I want this line here to be straight again, so I'd click on that, rotate, I'd click, let's say the bottom left of that wall, cross that vector, and then I can pull it straight again. Okay, now you're going to see, I'm going to talk about this later as well, whenever you're rotating something, what you're really doing is saying, right, I want, this is my centre point, and then this here is going to be rotated like that. Okay, so you're kind of like, it's like as if you're grabbing like a, I know, a, a bar and, and adjusting it. So you can say that between any points. If I wanted this point to this point being level on my screen, not a problem. All I'd do is go rotate the view from that point to that point is now level. Okay. And although it doesn't look it, it is. <laughs> okay, so you're always just saying, right, this and this are moving around. We're going to talk about the rotate tools later. All right, and if I click on that, I'll go back to zero. All right. This um, last one that we're looking at is um, a history of all of our views. And it is also very cool. Because if I go, actually, I really wanted to go back to how I just had the screen rotated. I can just click on that. See, and it will go back and forth. And if I keep going, you'll see all the different things I was looking at. Cool? So it's not undoing, it's just going back through all the different views I had, which is very convenient. If you had like a little courtyard, you know, and you have to work on a little bit of courtyard, and then you want to zoom out and look at the whole screen again, and it's like, oh great, now I've got to zoom all the way back down to that courtyard, you can just use that view, what's called the view history, to go back and forth. So you can just go back and it'll go back to where you were just looking. Likewise, yeah, you can go forward as well. So, very convenient. All right. All happy with that? So we can all zoom in, zoom out, move the screen. Cool. We're doing very well. What's the time? 10.15. What time does this class finish? 12.30? Is it 12 or 12.30? 12. Um, okay, I think what we'll do is we'll have a little break. Now, the last... Hang on, let me just do some quick math. So if we're finishing at 12, so we have a little break. We'll do a little bit more in the CAD, and then I'm going to talk about um, assignment one. So do not run away, because we're going to go for a walk down to the sports fields, which is also going to be your site for studio. Okay, so you're actually going to be using the same site for CAD and studio, and in fact, I'll be in your studio class as well. So um, there's kind of a semi-parallel thing going on here. Okay. Sorry? You're in a different studio. That's alright. Um, okay, so... Um, yeah, so when we get back, we'll have a little 15 minute break, and then um, we'll talk about our site. <laughs>